Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode with me and Jason. And we've got a special guest tonight. We've got Martin Banks with us. He is a seasoned truck driver, owner, operator. He's been in the game for quite some time. So he is here today to share some of his knowledge and answer some questions that you guys have been throwing out to us. So without further ado, Martin, if you want to give a quick um, overview of who you are and let the audience get to know, they know me and Jason, they're getting familiar with me and Jason, but introduce yourself, please. What's up? What's up, world? Hey, 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 this is Martin Banks uh, from Loganville, Georgia. Um, I've been in the trucking industry for a little bit over um, 20 years. I've been an owner operator for, uh, for right at about three years. And um, I, I tell you, uh, it's it's a very dog and dog world out there. Um, you know, I would my main advice to anybody would be, you know, surround yourself with, with knowledgeable people, surround yourself with um, people who's been out there in the game and just don't go out and listen to know any and everybody because anybody can sell your dream. So uh, I guess guys, we can just go ahead and get started um, with some Q and A's and uh, we can go from there. Cause I mean, just like anything else, there's a lot of knowledge. It's uh, to be learned. It's a lot of knowledge to be passed. Uh, knowledge is dead if you keep it to yourself. Hey, all right. All right. All right. So, okay, Jason, so give us I'm, give us some. Let's start this off. And, um, give me some know, smoke. Let's go, my people. I'm, I'm going to start this off. So, please like, share, and subscribe to what we've got going on, which is Jewel and Jason, which is Jewel Williams and Jay's music. J A. am saying Jay's music. J my vision. I've been saying that all day. J my vision. J a y m y v i s i o n at YouTube, Instagram, and all that good stuff. And we're here, uh, Martin. I'd like to welcome you to Jason and Jewel, or Jewel and Jason, or J and J. However you want to say it. And we're just <laughs> glad to have you <laughs> to it. And um, like I said, we're only gonna get better. We're gonna add more stuff to this podcast, this channel. And we're just going to branch out, man. You, you know, um, me and Jewel had made a pact that we're going to try to do 100 episodes, 100 <laughs> of these, these, these things. And I invited her to the Rick Ross Car Show next year. I invited oh, oh. you this year, but my money wasn't right, so I couldn't bring you along. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I don't man. think it was the money. Money wasn't the issue. I think it was more so than the ticket. Yeah, <laughs> we, we tried. We tried it. We, we tried, tried, yeah. But uh, but anyway, man, um, great to have you. Um, I'm gonna speak a little bit about Martin. Uh, he's got a great character. Um, I worked with him for about uh, maybe five or plus years, I think more. But um, I was introduced to him. He's uh, he's very passionate about his career and his family. Um, he uh, became an armor operator, ex-military. So uh, right on, a lot of right people, a lot of people think we on here. And it's a facade. Like we come on here and we just making stuff up. Like we're not, we're not connected, and we don't know individuals and people that that's really out here, uh, really trying to earn a, uh, do a, do this entrepreneurship thing, and earn an honest living, or just get ahead. So we just brought you along, man, to just uh, to stamp our credibility or what we're trying to do, vice versa for us speaking on your behalf, saying that you are who you are. So, like I said, man, I appreciate you joining the channel and bringing your insight. And I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let jo J Jewel do her thing. And then I'm going to just pick him, pick everything out. I'm just going to pick in that brain. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. So, Jason, um, as always, you're always talking to a lot of drivers and people out there. So what is your first question for us today that you had on the um on the Q and A. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Martin first. All right. So Martin, um, what made you want to become an owner operator other than curiosity? And, um, would you, uh, what would you do different, um, now versus when you first started? So that's the two question. Uh, gotcha. Well, uh, what made me wanted to be a uh, owner operator was basically I wanted to keep some of that money in my pocket. I wanted I wanted that that cut 
um, to be all profit, no cut at all. Um, we know as, and, and, and Jason, you and I, we both have been in logistics for a while. You've been in it a little bit longer than I have. And in logistics itself, it's just moving so many, not only, I mean, all products in the world. So we know that's a never uh, ending industry. So with that being said, I was just blown away about how easy it is to make money in logistics. So I wanted some of the, um, some of that money in the game. That's what I wanted. That's what, that's what I, and also I'm going to tell you this. I was like, oh, I got to tell you this. Um, I wanted to travel. And so I could travel and um, go out and see the different states, you know, because uh, I love to drive. I mean, I love I love driving and I love um, to see the different states. And I could do it while I'm getting paid and I was enjoying what I was doing. And man, just seeing it, seeing it, seeing the world for free, basically. Yeah. So um, that that's the, that's the first part. That uh, the second part. Um, the second part. Um, I I tell you, Jason, you know, be, I mean, just being a truck driver and you know being away from the, your family, and uh, I would I would tell anybody, you know, it's a monster, you know, uh, it's going to be some sacrifices made. Um, are you willing to to, to sacrifice, you know? Uh, which head, of, which part of that head you want to be, you know, of that monster, and it, it's a conversation that you got to have. <clears throat> okay. So I, I would like to add. Um, you know, you mentioned one of the things was you didn't want to split the the pay. You you didn't want to you don't want to break anybody off. Did you find that once you began to get closer to the source of the money that that was a reality or did you find that you still had to break, break off something for whatever type of services that you needed, whether it be signing up on somebody's low board or, you know, whatever dispatchings, whatever. And, you know, that in itself, you know, that right. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. That in itself, because I knew I had to do that because I was still learning as I, um, when I first got started, and I and like I say, and like the Jason said, you know, uh, what would I do different? I mean, I totally would do the whole thing um, being an owner operated uh, different from the experience that I had because of, you know, just learning the do's and don'ts and not actually having any skin in the game as being an owner operator. That's first and foremost. That was my first mistake. <laughs> um, I would definitely say, hey, like uh, Jason said before. You know, you want your equipment paid for. You don't, you know, you want to go in with no, um, with basically little or no overhead at all. Um, dispatchers, um, I, I, I tell you, you know, they're going to get a piece of the pie. But, you know, of course, you can be your own dispatcher or whatnot. Um, and, yes, I'm very passionate about uh, driving and everything. But at the same time, I, am I passionate about my my pocket or am I passionate about the real the the, the realism of hey you you got a family and is this gonna work? So you know like Jason said it, it's more so about okay uh the reality of it is hey do you have the uh, the compensation you know to do this uh, by yourself mm -hmm. so when that came to fruition it's like hey the industry changed um it 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 fluctuated with all of these uh, dispatchers, uh, with all of these brokers, and they was taking a piece of the, a big chunk of a piece of the pie. And so that's, and that was the real reality um, check for me. It was like, okay, you guys are taking too much. So at this point, it was like, do you, do I need these guys? And, and the reality of it is, is that no, but yes, because you can't get those loads that you're Seeking for <laughs> that um, two dollars or four dollars or five dollars a mile, you can't get those loads without them. You know, you got to have a, a, a back door. You got to have that inside person. If not, sink or swim. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with that, I think one of the things that I've recognized since I've been in, you know, as on the side of a broker, 
Um, a broker is really a salesperson. A dispatcher is right. really a salesperson. That that's it's an alternative name because of the function that they do. But at the end of the day, that dispatcher is really making sales calls for you, Correct. and they're selling your service. And so that's um, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, uh, you've got a sales team that also dubs as an administrative <laughs> team to do your paperwork. But it still takes that sales uh, mentality to dial for dollars, like we used to call it when I was in sales, and be on that phone. But what made it difficult, I think, when they came out with rulings, yep, uh, what makes it difficult for truck drivers, you guys can't call while you're driving. You can't sit there and dial for dollars while you're moving to the next location. So in essence, you have to have a partner right there to do that for you. Um, And the brokers are supposed to do that for you. But the broker and dispatcher don't see themselves as salespeople, I don't think. I think they see themselves as somebody that just finds a load. And if they adapt that sales mentality, they're going to approach it a lot differently. They're going to approach it from a sales cycle perspective that you always have to go back and and do extra to make sure that that pipeline stays full for you, the driver. Because when you're headed out to New York from Georgia, don't sit back and, and just track the, what your destination they have got to be throwing that that fishing line out there and that net to catch them another fish in that zone that you're going to be close to. So that means they've got to have the resources on hand, not to just go to the low boards, but understand what is that area out there? What is the competition? What what is um, what are the customer base? What are the customers looking for? What are the commodities that are coming out of there? If you're going to a place that that focuses on predominantly uh, frozen goods and you're going in there with a dry van, chances are you're not going to get any freight because right. everybody that's coming out of that zone is needing a reefer. So right. that means you might have to do deadheading to get to the next location because the immediate zone that you're in is, is 50 to 100 miles from anybody that's got some dry van goods. So these are the things, though, that... Uh, as a dispatcher and a broker, if if you team up with wow. them, you want to look for, and I'm I'm talking now to those of you who are owner operators, um, your sales team, your your broker team, and your dispatch team needs to put on their sales hat, and they need to approach the situation from a salesman's perspective for that driver, and be have have a strategy for that. Don't just sit there and look at it like, oh, all I got to do is track this and 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 send out notices, okay? Um, right. And I would even, for any owner operator out there, uh, and if you're looking for a dispatcher, because you know they changed the ruling. Uh, Martin, we talked about this when they changed the ruling. You can only dispatch for one for one company. Uh, right. But I, I know a lot of people are still doing it, and that's fine. I hope everybody's surviving out there. But... Um, <laughs> You know, if you are dispatching for one particular truck driver, you should know every zone that they're going to. You have got to um, utilize digital marketing. You also need to look at technology and how that's going, because as we talked about last week, uh, J.B. Hunt dropped 90,000 carriers from their roster. That's correct. 90,000 carriers. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, and I just, you know, got a notice on my way home today that C.H. Robinson just cut uh, 80, 80 sales reps from their team. And they only have 150. So what is that telling you? These companies are leaning out because they're introducing technology to take over some of the work that a person does. So if they're leaning out what does that as as an owner operator now you have to have a strategy you have to be planning your next move because like you said martin uh your money's got to keep coming you're still going to have if you've got overhead you still got to make sure you got your overhead costs and the report from atri that came out last week operating margins are at two dollars and 27 cents and you're not even getting that per mile exactly 
So if you are only taking a, a load that's giving you a dollar fifty per mile, and you know at minimum your operating cost, according to the national surveys and statistics, that every truck driver is spending at least two dollars and twenty seven cents per mile, don't take the load. You you right. at some point you just have to stand on your ground. Um, now if you don't have any overhead, okay, great. But again, you got insurance rates, you got fuel costs, and fuel is going to eat through that overhead anyway, because that fuel is going to fluctuate from state to state. Okay. So as a business person, you got to know your numbers. You got to, you got to know where your money's going, how's it going and stay on top of it. And if it is not feeding your family, if you are going in the hole every time, you're just going to have to lay the truck down for a little bit and and rethink the situation. Now there's money to be made, it's just how it's going to be made is the challenge. The long haul right. is changing. I I think Let me chime in. Let me yeah. chime in on that real yeah. quick. So, I'm going to piggyback off what you said as far as like um the market. You uh -huh. know, dry, truck driving is seasonal, you know, uh, for, uh you have um yeah, pine straw season. You have your um, your port um, season. You have your frozen season. Um, you know, we hear guys always talking about how much are they making, um, but they're not talking about how much they're actually bringing um, into the um, into the storehouse. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have my brother um, brother in law. Um, he's doing pine straw right now. He's making them kill. Them. But when winter time comes, what what you do now? So he has to put those dry vans down, and now he has to, uh, like we said, now he has to run uh, frozen. No, you can't. Well, no, you can't even run frozen, and not in. Um, I'm sorry, you can't even run frozen in the winter time because you don't have anything to run. Mm -hmm. So now you got to go pick your poison, go do dump trucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot, you can't do dump trucks because it's seasonal also. So you can't um, do asphalt um, in the winter time. So it's now. You have to, like you said, be strategic about um, becoming a truck driver. Um, it's it's pick, pick your poison. Um, it, I'm telling you, you, you guys are so right. And I thank you guys, uh, first of all, for having me on the channel, uh, for inviting me, um, because there's a lot of information that's, you know, that's misleading out there. And a lot of people are not getting, you know, um, real information that is actually useful you know they they get all this um bad propaganda uh, uh you know truck drivers making this making that no you're not you're not you they're not making what they say uh, mm -mm. you know mm -mm. um if anything they getting monies from insurance coming from being in an accident that they can't spend um anymore uh they just land up in the bed you know or something like that uh god forbid but um, no, you're not making that money out there. And so it's like the industry is more so not for uh, uh, owner operator. They're trying to make it to uh, be that way. Uh, I, I mean, you know, just from the owner operator side, I'm thinking it's more so, hey, we just only want company drivers on the road. Mm -hmm. It's That's cheaper. my opinion. It, it's cheaper Absolutely. because um, most of them are coming out of school. They're new drivers. Okay, right. so you're only going to pay them a uh, small you know percentage of you know, yeah pennies on the dollar and most of the time they put them with a trainer and what does that trainer do he's basically getting or she's getting uh the cut from what they're driving miles so they're basically running a team right. without really having to split the money amongst the team like they usually do so um and then if they're pulling drayage you know you can only do so many turns i mean realistically um, right. from, from, uh, Savannah to Atlanta without running into traffic, uh, accidents or something. So the other business model, they're taking it from the port and put it on the rail car. Savannah did a whole uh, show about how um, they revamped their whole rail system so that they can push more on the rail, send it up north. And then that way they can distribute it from the rails to the warehouses. So that's a great system. However, what does that do for the owner operator? That means you're only going to be doing short runs. And then if yep. you're stuck in that waiting line all day, you might do one or two runs a day. So now you're not making that long haul money. 
You're making Correct. that short run money. Um, so it's and it's not feasible. It's it's not the same business model and pricing structure that an owner operator is used to. Um, so yeah, these are things that are happening. And then what was it? Kansas City. Kansas City is building a huge warehouse facility, cold storage. And in the report, it said the reason for that is because 85% of the United States can be reached in, within three to four days from that location. Mm. So what do you see happening? Wow. What do you see wow. happening? Yeah. Hey, see, so this is the game I'm talking about. Well, we got a bad girl on this thing here. This information... <laughs> Telling you, hey Mark, she she blow my mind sometimes when she be coming with all this right. stuff. But she a right. bad, you bad man, jammer. I mean, I remember just just that, that, that conversation on the road, and I'm listening for hours, and uh, it was killing time. I was getting where I had to go, but I was uh, gaining information at the same time. <laughs> very, very valuable information. Well, that that's the focus that I like. That's the, my focus right there. I want to give out this information because it's not available. And, and when it is available, it's coming with, a like you said, Martin, with this dog and pony show of all this extravaganza. It's not. And it's not. And, and when I look at the numbers, it's about selling the insurance, selling the bond, selling yes. the next loan, because they know if you if they get you in it, boom, you're going to give them at least enough money to get them to the next level. And then you ain't got right. the business. You're numbers. gone. You're at numbers. And and the thing about it is, is that they don't even care. No, because they, they already got enough skin in the game to where, oh, that's a loss. And we, they are, the, they have a, they have a whole department over there for loss. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, and I learned the hard way. I mean, I went in with my brokerage, um, and then the game changed. I, I mean, a lot of stuff changed. <laughs> right. Okay. So I had to shift and pivot. But then I said, you know what? Let me take this knowledge and let me teach somebody. Let me train somebody. Right. Let me help somebody understand Listen. how not to get caught up in this game and lose their shirt. And at least they can, you know, make money somehow, but it might not be the way they want to. And I always talk to my students about, okay, they come out there and they be like, oh, I'm going to make a whole lot of money. I had somebody, one guy told me one day his cousin made $10,000 a week. And I said, every week? And he was like, don't, <laughs> don't question it. It's there. I said, I just want to know if it's every week because if it's every week, <laughs> I'm going to need to talk to your cousin. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I, I guarantee you, didn't get, you haven't had a chance to talk to his cousin. <laughs> no, I never got a chance to talk to his cousin because he, That's right. he, he, you know, so again, that that's the illusion that he was told from his cousin Absolutely. and he was bragging on it. And I was just like, come on, man, nobody makes $10,000 a week like that. Unless you, unless you in that high rise up there, that CEO sitting on that, you know, top floor. Right. Uh, right. And, and they making 1.2 mil a year. Okay. Absolutely. Because uh, is, that's it. We, you know, in the company that we work for, we got some gatekeepers. We got mm. some guys. Serious money with some serious lanes, mm -hmm. but we're 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 doing like as uh they were used with LeBron and Bronny James nepotism. You know a lot of this stuff um, that I've learned, you know, uh, from the company we work for and the company I previously worked for, which was RPS. They're they're it's it's like they um they only give them to their buddies, you know, those direct lanes. If you look oh, at, yeah, let me, yeah, let me, if you look at Jason, if you go in and start looking at board of directors, you'll see the family. Mm -hmm. right. You'll see the family. Um, when I was researching a company and I was like, wow, they blew up quick. I was like, they just came out three months ago. They're already on CNBC. I'm like, this is amazing. You know? So I, I'm, you know, I'm digging in. I'm like, what are they doing? Oh, I see brother, sister, wife, nephew, but they all had the same last name. <laughs> and I was like, this ain't even real. You know what I'm right. saying? Like th th you can't, I can't, I can't compete against that. You know, you, right. you, you just hit the ground running because basically you broke off a piece of that money and you said, I'm going to put it over here. Y'all watch it. Don't let nobody get to it. So in order for you to watch it, I need you to sit here, you to sit here, and you to sit here. 
and that's how we roll. And then we get to walk in the door and I get it. I'm not mad at you, but you know, if I want to be a piece of that pie, I'm going to have to think just as strategically as you do. I'm going to have the knowledge that you have, and I'm going to have to share it with folks. And we're going to have to strategize and do the same thing you do because we can, we can do it. The playing field is, is level, but you got to get people on board that, that see the vision. Okay. So I'm going to play a little tennis here. So now Martin, I'm going to switch it to Jewel because I had some questions for her. And I want to also be mindful and let you know that we have a lot of people that watch what we're doing. They don't necessarily like it or comment or click that button, but we have a lot of stalkers. So uh, a lot of times people look at our stuff, but they don't, they don't, you know, they don't do what they do diligence, but that's cool too, because we're only going to keep getting it to them and we're just going to keep getting better and better and better on, yeah, on, the, on game. But <laughs> so, anyway. so you, know, you guys definitely going to have to have me back, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. We can we're bring you on as a regular. Yeah, we're going okay, cool. to get Mike Piles on here. We're gonna, we might do a three-piece part. You That's know it. So, Absolutely. You know, I got some other people actually out of uh, Orlando, Florida, my nephew and then my cousin that's out of Mississippi. He want to jump on there. And he's uh he works for actually a common carrier and he, he might spaz out, so I gotta use a filter with him. But um yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> he very aggressive. Spaz and out, okay. He, hey, he might be doing it from the truck, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I want to I said all that it is um Jewel, we have some um some some people that's very curious about uh your background, not more so that's your background, but they want to know uh, what made you want to be a, a trainer uh, for the CDL license. That's one question. The second question is um, about your brokerage. Um, uh, how hard was it to start up? I know a lot of stuff you had to use personal uh, information to actually start it and how your, your surety bond was based on your personal credit. Mm-hmm. And, and one more question. I mean, I, I keep them, Keep them real short. But another question was, uh, how passionate are you about your 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 brokerage and your training as a CDL trainer? And are you are you licensed just in Georgia? So uh, license. Okay, so I'll take the first one. So the first one, uh, what made me want to train? Um, I got into the the CDL training actually because I needed drivers. So um, the technical college was looking for B class um, box truck trainers. So I was thinking, ooh, box trucks. Yes, because I could see everything was kind of nibbling down to where box trucks going into the different um, homes and, and doing these types of deliveries, LTL, basically. So when I applied, though, because I had such an extensive background in the CDL, they said they offered me. CDL trainer for class A. So I said, okay, I like that. So at first I was a little apprehensive because I didn't know if I was able to transfer my knowledge in the way that they needed to. But when I started to see how my students gravitated to the knowledge, it became easy. And I, I loved on them as, as people because they were looking for a new career. They were trying to just, they were coming from the Walmart, you know, checkout stands. They're coming from, you know, these onesie twosie jobs. They're trying to get in retail. They're not really making any money. So what they saw was a career change to where they once they get that license, you know, Martin, you you can jump into any door. As long right. as somebody needs somebody to drive from point A to point B, you throw out that CDL, right. you're going to get hired. You will get hired. It's now up to me. On where I want to work. I don't have to. I mean, I've been driving for so long and my record's good. Really, I choose now. And I'll say, I don't want to work with you and I do want to work with you and you'll get to that stage. So that's what I really enjoyed about the training. So that kind of feeds into my passion. I felt more passionate about training the CDL than I did about the brokerage. Now, I like brokerage, but where I found with brokerage, it was a doggy dog world. Yes. And my challenge, my issue with brokerage was I can't honestly take from a driver that I know they got insurance to pay. They got food to put on the table. They're doing 90% of the work. Really? They really are. 
and, and coming out of pocket with a lot of expenses. And so here I'm seeing on the low boards that somebody wants to pay a thousand dollars for a load, uh, 1500 for a load. I know the math. I've been a truck driver. I know how much it costs for that driver to get from point A to point B. So I'm looking at this like, okay, if I take 200 to 300, they're not going to make no money. They're not getting no money. So it became a, a conscious decision to say, you know what? I'm not going to do brokerage. I'm going to flip this and I'm going to do more teaching than I do brokerage. So I've pulled away from my brokerage piece, not because I don't like doing brokerage. It's because it's it, the game is not the same anymore. Um, the drivers just are not getting the money that they need. And this running or low for $750. who I wouldn't recommend that for nobody. I mean, right. Uh, that that's that you you basically just got enough to put gas in your truck if that if that right. um the other piece to that is you got new players in the field <clears throat> amazon's a freight broker okay. uh uber freight is a freight broker then you've got your ch robinson's um if you go on safer web and that's what i started doing because i got curious and I said, let me start Googling. Let me start putting in some some names and say for web. And I start to see Walmart is a freight broker. And I was like, well, wait a minute. If all of these big cats are coming in as freight brokers, then mm -hmm. these cats like me, we're not getting the, what we see <laughs> on the low board is the stuff that people are like, we can't find nobody to do this load. Yeah. So maybe we call that garbage. That's right, garbage. And that's exactly what the low boards are starting to load up with. And the reason why is because technology is taking over. Absolutely. The Uber, the Uber freight to the world, they bought Transplace. A lot of people don't realize that Transplace was a platform for shippers to upload their freight and what they had going out. And then truck drivers could jump on or freight brokers could jump on. Okay. Uber freight came in, they bought that whole platform. And what they did is they cut the broker out, said, Nope, you can't come on this board unless you are a truck driver. And if you are a truck driver, prove it to us because we want to see your DOT number. We want to see your, your insurance. We want to see all this stuff. So yeah. that's what they did. So now I can't even get to the freight as a broker. Because Uber Freight locked it in. And then Amazon goes from the back end. Amazon said, well, you're already on here putting up your products. So let us come in there and talk to you about doing your logistics plan. Because, you know, we can do it from what we used to call it UPS, womb to tomb. We will start it at the womb when it's born at the manufacturer. And we would walk that freight all the way to the end the user. And even take it to the garbage if you needed us to. So womb to tomb. <laughs> that's what we called it. That's what Amazon has done. And they have providing, and I'm not mad at them. I think it's genius. But I think what's happening out here is if you're not digging into the research and you're not paying attention to what's happening in, in the space of the economy and, and looking at uh, stock reports, I know that stuff seems boring. But I get yeah. most of my information about the logistics industry by watching when they release their stock reports. Because when J.B. Hunt talks about what they earn, when Amazon talked about what they earn, C.H. Robinson talked about what they earn, you're talking about how much freight they moved. Right. Okay. That's how they're talking about. So if you're an owner operator, you're out here hustling, you're, you're missing it. OK, you're missing what's happening in the rest of the world. And then all of a sudden, oh, shoot. Where the freight go? Where the freight go? What? What? Hey. But in the meantime, they was in the boardroom and, and, and Amazon went to the back door and Uber Freight went to the back door and they negotiated and they made all this type of stuff. Now, all of a sudden, voila, freight's gone. They absorbed right. it. And what you got out there is the nibbles and the bits, the crumbs, the stuff that they really don't care who gets it. Just get it there by hook or crook. I don't care. Just get it there. That is the last bit of pieces. So 
now I think what's happening with the owner operator game is they're going back into uh, working with their companies. Um, and now they've got all these assets though. So what are you going to do with these assets? What are you going to do with these trucks and, and buying new trucks? We had for the school, just to give you an idea what's happening with that. We had to order from the manufacturing floor, a brand new truck because they are not manufacturing them anymore. If you mm. want a manual, you have to call, tell them the specifics and they'll make it because they are anticipating clean energy trucks being on the market, uh, battery operated with what Tesla's doing being on the market because the sustainability act that came out said we have to cut emissions. And what is the biggest thing that is kicking out emissions right now? Diesel trucks. Yep. So the truck driver is going to have a job, but the owner operator will be the one that they push out first because what they're calculating is you're just, you're a lone wolf. You're met, you, you're the outlier that we call it in our data statistics. You're the outlier. You're everybody else is here in the cluster and you're way up here in the corner. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to worry about you. We want to deal with the cluster right here. That's what they're doing. So the owner operator has got to come up with a new business model and they've got to look at it from, I've got this asset. What can I do with it? How can I do with, you know, how can I make this asset, uh, produce money for me. And that means that they're going to have to team up with somebody unless they ha can do the research. They're going to have to team up with somebody to identify how can I monetize my assets to make money from them. Okay. So, uh, oh. and then I think that was, uh, was it hard to start my brokerage? Um, I didn't think it was hard because I, I had saved the money for it. Like I, I put the money most of that, well, I would say all that money came out of my pocket. Um, <laughs> but but I, I, yeah. I remember, I remember the journey. Yes. I the journey I, I, and I was hustling. <laughs> I was driving, stacking away, and I was going to school just because I saw the vision and the dream. So I don't regret it at all. I don't regret it because I, I believe right. that everything I learn has a purpose. Yeah. And it's, it's coming through right here in this channel because I'm able to give that information away and then hopefully teach people on this platform about being yeah. in business. And, and not yep. only that, not only that, you know, the steps now. Exactly. Before, we was just, you know, we were just twilling in the, you know, trying to, what I need, I need that too. I need this. I need mm -hmm. that. What? Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. put it all together. You made yep. it legit. And now you don't, you can actually tell somebody how to do it. Actually, yeah. or or actually, like we like to say, uh, profit from it because now you know all the steps. Yes, there, yes. there's nobody can't tell you you can you got to do this. You be like, nah, that's not mm -hmm. true. And so and, you, it, you, and I'm a, you can do that, but I want to go with what Martin said. You need to make sure you don't have any overhead. Right. Okay. Because overhead. I'm, is is where that's where your money gets eaten up and if you don't have any cash flow coming in any revenue that's you know you got to already have that revenue pipeline full full yeah. you know to where you can just pull people in um but it's no longer a lone wolf game yeah man. Uh, exactly it's not, it's not yeah, a lone wolf game no more you got to find a team when right. talking about no people eat on either <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Miss Jewel. Hey, I got a uh, question for you. Uh -huh. um, back in 2020, what would you say was the reason why the truck crisis doubled in 2020? Why, why, did, you, why did you think they allowed that to happen? It, supply and demand. That was, that okay. was about supply and demand. Um, all that freight basically was sitting at the ports. And they had to get that stuff moved. So the, the the demand was that we they needed that space for COVID stuff. So now we become an op it's operation COVID. It's not about get the TVs in here and get all that stuff. It was really about get the supplies to manufacture whatever we need to save 
the human race. So everything goes up because of we are in a state of uh, urgency. Okay, so now it's go, go. We don't care. We're throwing out this money. When they did that, they gave all that money away to all these companies on PPP loans. And, mm. and, and at that time, the interest rate was what? A negative one, negative two points. Mm. Well, when COVID started to ease up, Powell came into office and he said, you know, I gave you all all that money, but, you know, I'm going to need it back. All right. That's it. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I gave you a dollar at 0% interest, but I want you to give me back 50 cents. I want you to get back a dollar and 50 cents. People weren't planning for that. They were still looking at it like, you gave me a dollar for free. And then he said, well, yeah, I did, but I, I got to slow the economy down because I gave you all this money. So I got to get back a dollar 50. Well, that erodes all profits because now everybody started calculating their profits and loss statements based on, I got a dollar for free. So I did. I actually did this report in my class because I chose Uber Freight for this reason. And I looked at their balance sheet and their interest, um, their interest, uh, what is it called? Earned interest uh, expense. It, it, it just blew up. I mean, it went from like here to here. And I was like, well, if the interest expense goes up, then that affects profit. So I asked my professor, I said, am I reading this right? And he said, yeah. I said, well, then that means they are a negative 1,000% in the hole. He was like, that's right. That's what you read. So if you are a negative 1,000% in the hole, you're not making any money. (laughs) That's what Jason and I was just, I was just telling him, I'm like, shoot, I can, I can sit at home and, you know, um, I can work, go to work 12 hours, sit at home every night, be in my bed and make the same amount of money as a truck driver. Yep. Uh, I, 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 with no overhead, hundred thousand dollars, I can sit at the house. Exactly. So yep. everybody's looking at Uber freight, like, Ooh, this is a good, good business, but Uber is debt heavy. So really, the truck driver, the money from the shipper filters into Uber. Uber has to pay all of them Peters and Pauls. And the truck driver sitting on the other side waiting to get his. Well, he's got to wait for more money to come in to get to the driver. And I have talked Mm -hmm. to shippers who were sued because the driver thought the shipper didn't pay. And the shipper said, I paid. I pay, he was talking to me about he has a winery out there in California. And he said he got a notice, said, you're being sued by XYZ Trucking for the following money. You didn't pay. He said, yes, I did. And he showed him his receipt. I paid Uber. So it was six months down the road. Uber had not paid that driver. Yeah. So now companies are learning how to use uh, net 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80, 90 days. Yeah. That's a long. It's a long. Yep. Okay. The so two the, comp- that- the two companies I work for, they went up, and the current one has went up to 45 days. Wow. That's not too 45 days, a month and a half. That's not too bad, but still, it's, it's bad if you need that money right now. Yeah, right. wait on that. But that uh-huh. long- exactly. Mm-hmm. So now, that's why a lot of people are gravitating towards those government contracts because government contracts pay you within 24 to 48 hours after you finish the right. job. Once you get the, get that, boom, government issues you money. So now you're learning a little bit about how the economy works. When the economy is on its downtrod, the government is where people float to because the government has still got to operate. Right. And they're the ones that are getting the money in from the taxpayer. So they're yeah. going to pay you now. So now you're going to see this influx of everybody going to trying to get into that government contract stuff. Right. Everybody's trying to get on that boat. And then as soon right. as private industry comes back in, everybody's going to run over to that side of the boat. Absolutely. So it goes back to what you said about the trends and who you know and and basically when to get in and when to get out. But That's you got to right. get 
or uh, everybody else does. That's right. And uh, another thing with those uh, government contracts, oh, there are stipulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yep. and everybody can't get in on them government contracts. Sure can't. Sure can't. Okay. That, that comes to another question, Mark. I had two questions for you. Um, uh -huh. uh, how did you go about getting your uh, your uh, clearance for pulling that deport down to Savannah? And um, I don't like to use this word, but I'm going to use it. Uh, how strenuous was it? Uh, from uh, How many loads did you actually have to pull from the port to actually make it worth your while? Uh, meaning, did you have to I Meaning we knew you didn't actually have a trailer. You just needed a truck to move the, uh, the uh, freight from the port to where you was taking it. But um, how many loads would actually uh, benefit you on a daily, uh, on a work day, on an average work day? So my first question is, how, how did you look up and actually have clearance to get on the port to do, to right. do big as an owner op operator? Right. And, uh, where did you uh was you operating under your authority or somebody else's? Right. So when I first started my journey, um I did go through the process of um receiving my own authority, getting my own um uh, MC DOT number, all that good stuff. Um it's not as hard as everybody say it is. Um you just gotta um talk to the talk and meet the right people. They'll see you um the right way. I just had some good people around me and I ask I always ask a lot of questions. You know, I made mistakes, but I um I always ask questions first. I, I still make mistakes along the way. So uh, that part of it is it's not hard. Um a lot of it's um uh, too internet um connected to where you know you can just tap click a button and hey ask questions you make phone calls. Um Ms. Jill, she taught me that right there. You have too Jason. <laughs> um as far as getting your um, your port um, um, ID and M well not MC but your port um, access that was pretty easy. The only thing you had to do basically is go online and um, get your truck registered with the port. Uh, okay, that, that let me. Was, it let was me, let me ask you another question. I think it's an acronym. I think it's TSA or T. Maybe Correct. I'm saying. No, that's what. Did you have to apply for that? Is there a charge? Yeah. Is there a currency? How does yeah. that work? Can you elaborate on that a little bit for us? Yeah. Um, you you would go over there. Um, what's that? Over there in College Park. You just do a background check. But now you can go and get a um your port um uh, ID and everything. You probably can go to, to any of the TSA spot and um you can go on the internet and find that. Um you can Google it, it'll pop right up. Um, the cost of it was only seventy five dollars. Okay. Uh, port ID, uh, TSA uh, clearance, so you can get on and off the port. And of course, like you said, you know, make sure you have your MC, your DOT number. Now, some guys, um, we ain't gonna get into all that, but some of them guys, they would get on the port by using somebody else's um, um, truck or whatnot, or somebody be on the outside of the uh, port. No, no <laughs> so, way. Do you yeah. this? Yeah, some of them guys that be on the outside of the port. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't load. get arrested. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, nah, uh, Miss Jewel, they go back to, uh, to when you said it's a doggy dog. Uh, I'm telling you, it was by any means necessary. Mm. When when the port was popping, I'm telling you, it was popping. Uh, it's, at some some I think Jason, I told you for about um, a month and a half, two months, I was getting fifteen thousand a week. Um. I was running from Savannah to Mississippi, and those low was paying forty eight five thousand dollars, and uh, it was good. And like you said, though, Miss Jewel, you know that twenty twenty one season, I was killing it. And twenty twenty two came around, yeah, no, I mean it came to a halt because what happened, you know, it got oversaturated. Like you said, everybody ran to it. And um, got oversaturated, and the new the, the the new guys that came into the game, they had no skin. Yeah, you got skin right on out of there. Yeah, and that's what happened with that. It got over um, um, saturated. Um, 
Then you, uh, Jason, you had other uh, nationalities coming into the game, taking freight for let, uh, pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. um, but back, but to uh, answer your question, yeah, as far as uh, getting your um, port uh, pass, I mean port pass and all that, uh, it's very simple. Um, you can go on the internet and it uh, outlines everything. It tells you exactly what to do. Uh, you can call uh, me or Jason or Ms. Jill. We can go over that with you. Uh, this channel is going to be great. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> like I because said. It's hard enough and it's free. And that and that's the good thing because a lot of things that we're talking about, I guarantee you it's over a million guys who want to get into the game and they don't have a clue. They don't. Everybody's oh, yeah. telling them about, like, you know, this other stuff. And it's not all of that. It's simple, but you got to have the money. Yeah, and, and not, not only that, like um, like I said, uh, <clears throat> I've got um, my my cousin is uh, he works for a broker, well not a broker, but for a common carrier. And I don't want to mention their name because maybe I can, but maybe I can't. Right. But anyway, because uh, anyway, but uh, he's a newbie, so he was like, man, he's just passionate about his owner operator. And like I said, with Jew, we always talked about this. We don't want to discourage anybody from being a truck driver because mm -mm. a lot of the people that I know that are truck drivers, mm -hmm. um, it's like it's like a person is that that was a Christian. Now when they want to be in a nation of Islam, they think mm -hmm. one is better. Maybe this is more customized for me or who mm -hmm. I am. So now, not getting into the religious part of it, it's just like you have a lot of guys that that's, that's felons or whatever the case may be that can't do anything but cut grass or drive trucks. Mm -hmm. Be on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So there's that's this lane for them now. So mm -hmm. now they can get in this thing where they can say, okay, I'm gonna own a legitimate business. You know, my my past has messed me up where I can't come and work beside Martin and Jason, mm -hmm. but now I can move freight. So we want to. I don't want to discourage them saying that hey, this ain't where you want to be at because mm -hmm. some people can figure it out. But that being said, uh, that I'm being, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead question, question that I have from um, on the street level is like they want to know, hey man, hey cuz, how much uh how much them trucks cost? What's the insurance is? Is the insurance right. rates on my personal credit or my company credit? Um, mm -hmm. what's the overhead looking like? Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't know what the fuel cost is because. There's always a tolerance for fuel, fuel, fuel allowance. So, but the thing is, everybody want to take their money that they're making illegally and make it legitimate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of seed money. So this question is for you again, Martin. Um, I want you to touch bases with it a little bit and just give them, give a, give a, um, give me a bottom line on basically what it averaged you with uh, the cost of your truck the cost of your fuel, and the cost of your note on your truck. And as I said, I, I covered all base costs. Because basically, you can't pay yourself. Because Correct. you can you got to do the 1099. You got to do taxes. Of course, you can say you make this. But if you you waiting on, a, if you, we gave, what's the cut? What's the name of the, um, the factoring cost when you want to go through a? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a percentage. They use a charge, like a 2%. Mm -hmm. Right, right. right. So, so you know you get you, that money twenty four hours. I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you a chance to 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 dip in on the factoring costs, and and I want you to talk about the factoring costs because you was on the operator. So a lot of times you want to get your bread like ASAP. Man, you, yeah, talk talk. So, so, spill some game. Hey, so and the thing too, uh, let me uh, hit this right quick too, Jason. Um, you asked me um, what did it cost. Oh, how many loads a day would it take for me to operate? Right. By me running at the port at the time and it was popping. I mean, I, I could I could have done two loads, but it depended on where I was going. So, right. but at, on average, because I was doing long haul uh, surrounding uh, states, the southeast, I was doing only one load a day. But right. I wasn't getting. I was only doing one load, but I was only um, I was getting anywhere from seventeen to five thousand. Oh, depending okay. on um, where I was going and what I was carrying. So, and it was great. I mean, we was getting four or five dollars, three to five dollars a mile. And over over the last year, that has drastically been cut in half. 
at the port. Mm -hmm. Um, um, 2020, 2021, you was getting anywhere from 17 to 2,500 from Savannah to Atlanta. Now, those guys, I'm not in the game, but those guys, buddies of mine saying they're getting seven to nine hundred dollars for the same loads from Savannah to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, and, and, wow. and those are important. so I can imagine what driving, um, is getting. So um, I'm going to go and give you a little rundown on some of my expenses, um, my, what my co operating uh, costs, not even my operating costs, just my overhead costs. Um, truck note with great credit, um, great interest rate on my uh, vehicle. I had a 2018 uh, Peterbilt back in 21, and my note was 18, um, right at 1800 a month. Um, Jew, Jew, talk to me. Talk to me, Jew. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> my insurance. My insurance. Hold on. Let me uh, let me let me retract that. No, my insurance was um, right at eighteen a month, and my truck <laughs> note was twenty two a month. Man. Yeah. Yeah. No way. And um and we're not going to talk about fuel costs and factoring costs my factoring was uh right at um two two percent and i um had a uh, a dispatcher i had a uh, payment dispatcher um i ne i negotiated down to five percent i was paying her uh the broker of course they was getting their share so let's just break down uh three thousand dollars by the, um by the time i received because the race was good, let's just uh, use three thousand um, as a uh, 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 even number. After the breakdown, I did three thousand. I probably got about seventeen hundred dollars out the break um, when you break it down. So that that wasn't too bad because at the time, um, Port Lowe's was doing better than driving. Actually, they was doing better than any uh, division in trucking at the time. Okay, so let me let me make sure I'm saying I'm hearing this right. So that's what you was making a week or a month? No, no, that was per load. Three thousand oh, per was per load. Three thousand per load. That, that's let's say let's say that's per load. Depending, uh, I just used three thousand as a base number. Okay, let's okay, say, average. All right, would be at right. Let's say if it was five thousand, those numbers uh, would be a little bit different. Okay, but let's okay. say per week for about six months. And when I first got in, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna say seasonal, which is the summertime. I'm gonna use the summertime. A week, I was averaging between eight to eleven thousand. Okay. So that and that's when I first had got into it. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" You know, uh, the sky was the limit. I was rocking and rolling, and yeah. of course, you put back. You have to put that money back. You know, you don't go out and buy no lavish car, no yeah. um, got it. You don't go and buy no um, no Tesla. Uh, <laughs> don't come Facebook. Um, um, yeah. what I, know you, I know you even thought about getting a second truck, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, and, and you know, I would uh, because, like Miss Jewel said, the end game is to get to be an owner operator and not to be in the truck, exactly. <laughs> Scale, you know, and that but absolutely that's the ceiling. So, we're gonna put this money back into another um, um, vehicle and let these vehicles start working for you, you know, and that was the plan going into it. And so, um, you know, that COVID tore it up. It opened a door, but it also closed the door, too, because I didn't know enough in the game to understand, like Ms. Jewel said, the numbers at the time. You know, I didn't understand how the economy worked too far, uh, as far as um, what market is, is working and what market is not. You know, I didn't do enough research to understand that, hey, because the port is booming, that means you got to have a drive and trailer on standby when the port is down. Um, I had to have a flatbed um, trailer um, available, uh, ready to go when uh, drive van is down. I had to have a um, a refrigerator trailer. I had none of that, Jason. And what I had to do was end up um, starting to try, try and lease this, this other equipment. And I'm like, I can't afford this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Dude, I thought I was gonna have to go back and start selling some dope <laughs> and uh, to go to, to uh to go cover some expenses. I'm like, oh no! I talked not to the wife. That, I was like, I'm getting, no, getting killed. Not that. 
Not that. Yeah, I'm, no. Hey, I'm like, we're getting killed. I'm like, uh, um, Jason, I was gonna have to come and get some money from you and me to do. Oh no, hey, my so, goodness! You know, and, you know, and both of you guys know. Anytime you have to uh, go into your own pocket, that's it. You know, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. You don't have you don't have a business, nope. and, that, and that was the reality of it right there. And I uh, I told Jason, I me I called Jason. I told him, I said, "Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I come." <laughs> hey. I said, uh, I said, you know, I'm going into the pocket. I said, nah, that that well don't ran dry, you know. Yeah, and, and and you know me, um, was so um, and I I tell you this, man, and and I'm I'm very sincere, very passionate. You will know this, and 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 I feel the same way about you, about her. But I love you to death, and this is no cap. You know, my thing is, I don't know what that means. How, how you how you was how how humble you were, man. And I ain't, you know, my I ain't judge. You know, people. I, t- and I ain't one of the guys to be talking in your face and then tell somebody, bro, I-, I embrace you with open arms. I was I was happy to see you. I try to keep in touch with you every day. When you oh, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, even, even with you. I'm going to say this too, Jason. Um, picking back up what you're saying and Ms. Jewel saying, you know, and you want to make it to where it's a community and where we can network and where we can help other people. Exactly. You know? Out making money, but you only can make what your community make, mm-hmm. and right. you, you have to have that team. If you ain't got that solid team, you're not gonna make it. I, I don't right. care who you are. Um, Th- that's true. It, that's the yeah. business doesn't work that way. You have to have a team. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big, everybody. Yeah, and I'm a big advocate on community, man, and just me being um, around the Atlanta Hawks organization. Bro, they build a community where they help everybody. The money is there. Mm-hmm. They just right. trying to figure out how they're going to issue it and who's going to get what. And are you really serious about what you say you are? Like, yeah, yeah. We're, in, we're we're in a different space right now in time where people they use people to get what they want and then they jump ship. You feel mm-hmm. me? And a lot oh, of yeah. people, they, yeah. be, they be like, we ain't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? And not mm-hmm. saying we are, but I'm just saying a lot of people, they go with that the integrity is big on people. Like they be like, can I really, are you going to really do what you say when you ain't around me? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but do you know, you know, are you going to get home and just to be like, I'm done with that until mm-hmm. I see you and then, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And people don't, people don't, you know, and especially the new cats, like the yeah. new cats, yeah, they want to be where we at now, and yes. you know that. Like people, somebody to see you and say, "I want to be you now," knowing not what you've been through. Exactly. You know, they want to be the product. It's exactly. like instant. It's Instagram. They want to instantly beat you. Mm-hmm. you right. know? And a lot mm-hmm. of people don't know like where we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to where it's just like when me and Jew talk. We're trying to get to a space where we can provide something for somebody else. But people are not trying to get to a space where they can provide some for us. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, and that's what we are. Like what we're just basically trying to do. What you, what you, what you've been through, and what you've, um, the experience that you have, whether it be bad or good, it's the content that we want to share with people to say, "Hey, he's an owner operator." And 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 before we leave, I want you to tell your business name and all that good stuff because we're gonna plug you. Just in case you want to get back in that lane, but I know I want to get in the lane with you and Miss Jewel. Um, we we want to. Um, no, I want to be that teacher. You know, I the, the lane I want to be we, in. We gonna talk about that. We, this, we love, absolutely. We we this, this, this is the lane I want to be in. You know, educating um on uh, young people. You mm-hmm. know, let them learn from our mistakes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let yeah. let them, you know, keep some of that money in their pocket and, you know, hopefully they can inspire others as they, you know, gain experience in the um, industry and for them to pass the knowledge on. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do. That's you know, this, I, this is I, the I platform right here. It. This is that it's platform correct. right here that, that I'm putting together. It's, it's what I want to do is educate. Yes. I want to use I'm to give both of y'all y'all flowers. As usually, I gave you flowers every week. Martin, you always know we always talk. We always we we like we like brothers. We're 
you know, like I said, it's a brotherhood, you know. And uh, like right. I said, I'm still for him. He's always there for me. And I come to him, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mother was in a car accident, a real bad car accident a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. Yeah. And, um, and um, like I said, you know, my thing is, is that you guys let me, um, y'all give me what I need, and, and y'all a different type of family. And I and uh, like I said, I appreciate that. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. no doubt. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate both of you. Um, I mean, my audience today, our audience actually, I have to, I can't say it's my <laughs> audience anymore. It's our audience, but a lot of information has flowed out through this. Um, but also, I see a foundation to where we can add on to the education platform. So. This platform is about education. It's, it's, it's time to give people that knowledge because there are a lot of young people coming in. I've, I've trained several 18-year-olds learn how to drive a truck. I mean, they're just getting started. And I told them, you can't go out the state, but by the time you hit 21, what? And you right. know how to drive a manual? Right. I mean, come on. Come on. Right. There ain't that many of them that know how to drive a manual. Correct. That's still old school, and 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 if you got that in your pocket, right here, you you gonna be you bad, good. you bad. That's it, you bad. So um, there are a lot of them though that are coming in, fresh, right out of high school, 18, 19, 20, that want to learn how to drive, and and they can make a fortune in this business, but they they're gonna have to learn how to be a pack, not a lone wolf. They gotta learn how to be a pack. Correct. Correct. And and I see if, if you are on operator right now, you need to find your pack. You got to find your tribe. Pack. You got to find people Pretty y'all can network with, be on the phone with each other. Because truthfully, I know there's some dispatchers probably going to go, ah, did she just say that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. You really don't need them. If y'all network oh, yeah. together. <laughs> If y'all right. will network together, you don't need that dispatcher. Right. I, I can't tell you how many times I can pick up the phone. And I'll be like, yo, I just heard such and said, oh, you did? Yeah. Here, matter of fact, I told him you're going to call him. Okay, bet. Call him. Boom. <laughs> Hang up the phone. Absolutely. There's your Let lead. There's your lead right there. Okay. Yeah. Stop playing <laughs> this game. And when you, and, and the truck driver is the closest person to the shipper. Absolutely. The the yeah. salesperson don't even get that close. Absolutely. So, hey, Jason. Uh, Miss Jewel, check uh, this out. Um, in dispatch fees, uh, a year and a half, two years, I paid $24,000. And <laughs> RTS, um, um, that my 2% mm. fee, that mm. was uh, $7,000. Wow. That's, oh, we put that in something. That's 31. That's sure. 31 in. Right. Um, two years, thirty one thousand dollars in two years that, that could have went into maintenance, and we're not even talking about what maintenance was. But and that was just you, absolutely. Imagine how okay, so d- that's just you, RTS. That's one. <laughs> and those real problem. numbers, yes. Those 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 are real numbers. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm just telling my audience right now. These two gentlemen and myself got a lot of knowledge. We're going to get to that paywall one day and we're going to come to you and we're going to say to get the rest of this, you're going to have to pay for the classes. <laughs> Dang. That's it. But it's going to be worth it. We're not coming. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this other story. Uh, I researched her. She talking all this stuff about logistics, supply chain, da, 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 da. I was like, wow, she sounds knowledgeable. I dug into her background. She ain't never drove a truck. Ain't never worked <laughs> in logistics. She is a marketing, <laughs> educated marketing person. And I'm sitting here like, wow, they following you like, like a flock of sheep. Okay. But you ain't got not a lick. You have never stepped a foot in a truck and you talking all this game. So you can't believe everything you see out there that these people have got you. Absolutely. It's an illusion, but they, they do it because they have the, idea that truck drivers aren't smart absolutely and we some of the smartest ones out there on the road it's a lot of it takes a lot of brains to run that truck absolutely if you don't mind could you tell us the name of your company your llc and all that good stuff please um oh yeah you've got a you've got a fire fire uh editing guy and he's gonna make this out of short so 
we like to give you your 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 props. And you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, we got a lot of talkers. Okay. So they're gonna they're gonna mm-hmm. look you up and see if you hey he really what did he really drive a truck? Who is this guy? So wow. you know because uh, my, my whole thing, you know what's funny? What's that? And even though people DM people like that, somebody DM me. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about it. Oh what? I saw you on that little situation. I should have screenshot and sent it to her, but I don't know if that's petty or I'm just got up. I'm just getting popular, but I'm not sure. Anyway, back to <laughs> what I was <laughs> But anyway, uh, um, um, yeah, so people going to fact check. So this stuff is actually working. I told you I got, I think I got five or six more subscribers on my YouTube channel. So, um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's doing, you know, whatever, but you know, like I put I said, his link in the, I put his link in the description. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, I'm sorry, you know, man, I talked to you to death, but go ahead and get, you know, do your thing. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I'm, hey, I'm a, uh, old city country boy. Um, you know, I am who I am. I, I'm, cut, I'm straight to the chase. I don't cut anything. Uh, I'm gonna give you the truth. I mean, I have, I have nothing to gain by seeing you, uh, telling you a lie. Um, but I'm Martin Banks. My trucking company name is Banks Elite Trucking um, LLC um, out of Loganville, Georgia. Um, hey, I'm I'm that dude. Uh, I'm I'm here on a podcast, which is uh, which I'm very excited about with two of the finest in the game. So um, again, I'm just excited to be here. Although I I, I promise you guys, I just woke up. <laughs> it, it, it was like uh because uh my wife said well, do you gonna take the phone call i was like man i look a mess she was like whatever so i was like, right but i told you today so i was like i'm that guy you hey, know man. yeah i'm prisoner yes all so. right awesome awesome more questions for y'all i'm gonna save mine for later jewel you know i got it i keep it coming um i got I- some content today so- yeah, yes, yes, you did. Like I say, I appreciate you, Martin, for being a guest on the show. I appreciate I appreciate you, Jewel, for setting it up and launching it. And um, you know, I do what I do. That's it. Well, y'all heard it here. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next week. So keep subscribe, like, and share this video. All right, peace out. Peace out, fam.